Hi guys, welcome to another episode of PS Fight with PCOS. So today I am going to let you know how I was diagnosed with PCOS, what is PCOS, and what are some of the symptoms and signs that um, could let you know that you have PCOS. Before I get started, I wanted to explain something. I had went ahead and I typed up some questions, um, some answers that I have given out to my family and friends throughout the year, because um, they don't really know what PCOS is. And these are some of the answers I have got back from my OBGYN and my primary care doctor. So before I start this video, I just want to let you guys know that I am not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, um, I do not have any medical background, this is specifically my own diagnosis, these are my systems off of my body, um, I'm not advising you to take anything, I'm not advising you to do any type of thing if you do have PCOS, um, always check with your provider um, before you do anything. So which is going to bring us to what is PCOS. Now PCOS is an end chemical balance in your hormones. So what is exactly does that mean? Well that means that your body um, doesn't signal something in your brain for your ovaries to give you a monthly cycle. So basically what happens, a lot of women who have PCOS do not have the period. And I was one of those women that had PCOS and I did not ovulate. So what would happen is every month instead of me to ovulate, I keep getting these little cysts in my ovaries. Now don't be scared. If you do have cysts in your ovaries, it is benign, it's not cancerous. Um, basically what it is, it's just fluids. Now, if your cysts, sometimes women who do have PCOS well develop um, polyp or fibroids. Um, those are things that you know your medical doctor would explain to you. Sometimes it's not even caused by PCOS. It's just that's how it, it just happens. Um, so do not worry that there are cysts in your ovaries. It's not going to turn to anything. I had them for years. I had it since I was 16. I'm 33. Thank God I'm still alive. So it's nothing harmful. Now, what are some of the sides? what we with PCOS. Now, when I had PCOS, I was diagnosed at the age of 16. And I noticed, and my mom noticed that I was not getting my period every month. I would go maybe six to eight months with no period. At first, my mom was like, mm, you know, maybe it's just your body changing. But then she became really concerned when um, eight months had went by and I had no sign of my period. So she brought me to my regular doctor at that time. And, you know, he read some blood tests and things like that. And they came back. He really couldn't give me an answer. He just said, oh, maybe she should eat more fruits and vegetables. When I was 16, I started gaining a lot of weight. Um, throughout my childhood, I was very slim. I never had a weight problem, um, but I noticed when I was 16, I kept packing on the weight. So when I was about 18, I finally started an OBGYN doctor, and um, I told her with the no periods, and, you know, she noticed the back black patches around my face, excessive hair growth. Um, she did an ultrasound, and she found a lot of cysts in my ovaries, and she told me I had PCOS. At that time, I had no clue what PCOS was. I'm like, what is this? I was, you know, I was scared, I, and then I was nervous. I didn't know what it was. My OBGYN doctor just told me this is what I have. She didn't give me any other explanation on how I could manage it or how I could cure it. She just told me I have this, just eat more vegetables and, fi and fruits, and I should be fine. Now, as I got older, I noticed I gained more weight. I noticed that excessive hair became even more excessive. I would sh go to the beauty shop, I would shave, and my hair would grow back in another week or so, and it would be more excessive than before. Um, I noticed I started to have a lot of acne problems when I was younger, um, and I was depressed, I had mood swings, and it was just very hard. I really didn't know what was going on with my body. I just didn't know why I felt this way. Um, but I, I have to be honest with you guys too, I was not exercising too. Um, I was eating the right foods and stuff like that, which we'll talk a little bit more about how I got my period on my own. I'll let you guys know what I did. Um, so she didn't give me any medication. So fast forward to when I got married at the age of 27, and I had told my husband that, you know, I have this condition, I have this syndrome, I have PCOS, it's going to be hard for us to have a baby. Um, he's like, you know what, 
God will help us. If it's in his work, we will have this child normally. If we can't have it normally, then we will do whatever it takes. We'll do IVF. If that doesn't work, then, you know, it's expensive, but then the last choice would be for us to adopt. So we already had our whole life planned. We had everything planned out. We had everything that we were going to do if it didn't happen. It was hard, guys. Um, in order for you to become pregnant with PCOS, you need to ovulate. Now, there are women who have PCOS. They're able to get the period, they're able to ovulate, and then they get pregnant. With me, I was not ovulated, so it was very hard for me to get pregnant. Um, so then I went to see another OBGYN doctor, and he gave me Provera to give me my period. Um, metformin is to control the sugar that's in your body. When you have PCOS, you have a lot of insulin in your body, so your body just doesn't know what to do with the sugar, so you have to, um, it doesn't know how to break it down. So basically, food has a lot to do with PCOS. And I kept, like, a lot of times too, guys, like, you could go to the doctor, but you really have to put in the work. You have to be your own advocate. The doctor is only going to give you what they feel you need based on your symptoms, but nobody knows your body the way you do. So for years, I hated eating healthy. I hated working out, but check out my other video before this one, how I lost 33 pounds, because I think that would be very helpful. If you're watching this video, you probably want to know what is PCOS, or if you have it, how could you cure it naturally. Um, so I gave up coffee and I gave up red meat. I gave up McDonald's. I gave up all the fast food guys. Now, you know, let's say if I go out on a weekend with my friends, I could have one meal. Like I could have a small fry or I could do like a tender or something, but I'm not going to do it every single day. And that's how you balance in life. Um, and I did that guys. And I lost 33 pounds. I feel happy. Uh, I feel better. Um, it brings me to the other topic. Is PCOS treatable? There is no cure for PCOS, uh, but there has been research and many books out there of people who have reversed PCOS by eating plant-based food. Now, plant-based food is is um, easy for some people. I'm not going to lie. For me, it's hard. Uh, but what my husband and I have done... Um, okay, so... How I manage my PCOS, I exercise, I diet, um, I don't eat red meat, I don't eat fast food, um, and if I do eat, if, if you're going out with your friends like, to a restaurant, like if you really want a burger, now I don't eat red meat, but if you're someone who is following, maybe you have a few diets to follow in life, maybe you like the diet that I've been on, maybe you want to try that, if you're really craving a burger, I would suggest you to go to a restaurant. Don't go to a fast food chain restaurant. Go to an actual restaurant and have an actual gourmet burger because they're going to give you 100%. And I'm not saying the other restaurants don't, but I'm going to tell you it's going to be much better for you because the, the meat is going to be more natural. It's not going to be frozen. Um, and you're going to, it's going to be grilled correctly um, and they're going to give you more fresh vegetables okay so that's the only small suggestion i would give to you if you're someone who is craving a burger you're on a diet but you want to have one meal uh, uh, like you know one little cheat meal um, on the weekend so you go out with friends so you could certainly do that i don't have tea i don't have alcohol i don't have donuts i don't have large candy bars i do however have chocolate peanuts I do, however, have small little chocolate candies, and I only have four about a day. Um, I can't have alcohol or coffee or tea anyways because the alcohol is going to raise up my blood sugar, my, uh, my high blood pressure. Um, the caffeine will raise up my high blood pressure. So those are things that I do not play with. Um, having high blood pressure is very serious. Um, disease. Um, if it's not treatable, it could lead to um, a stroke. It could lead to a heart attack. It could lead to a, a lot of things. So I do not mess with that. I, I stick. Let's. I follow that one to a T. Um, let's see. What have I? What have I eaten to manage my PCOS? Now, to manage PCOS. Here's, here's the thing that's a little bit tricky with PCOS. Now, a lot of us who have PCOS, we do have a lot of insulin resistance in our body. Some of us do, some of us don't. So fruits do have a lot of sugar, but fruits has a natural sugar. I try to have maybe two fruits a day. 
Um, some people, like, you know, there's some videos I watch of people going vegan. Um, they do large bowls of fruits, like large bowls of yogurt, and they add all these fruits in it. Now, those people, they don't have the condition that I have. So I really can't eat a large bowl of fruit because that is just going to put too much sugar into my body, which is not going to be good. Uh, chicken, um, I try not to eat a lot of dark meat. Now, dark meat is really good. I'm not going to lie. Grilled chicken or not, it's really good with the, black, with the dark meat. But, um, you know, they try to tell not to eat too much dark meat. Salmon, um, wild salmon, haddock fish um, are the fishes that I have. Um, you could do rice. Now, there are some people who do, um, like, broccoli rice. Now, I'm just going to stick to my white jasmine rice because that's what I like to eat. My background's Haitian descent. That's what I've been growing up on. Um, instead of doing three cups like I used to do, I do one cup of rice. Um, and I don't have rice every day. I might have it, like, maybe once a week or something like that. Potatoes are good. Um... I eat potatoes, but potatoes could rise up my high blood pressure, so I try not to have it too much. Um, I talk about the mini candy bars, granola bars, vegetables. Now, my favorite vegetable is broccoli and spinach. Um, and I will be doing a grocery haul to show you guys some of the foods I get and why I got them. I love spinach. I put it in my smoothies in the morning. Um, I always have a side of spinach every night for dinner when I put a little bit of butter. It's just... It's just, it's good for you. I, I really love it. Um, water. I drink a lot of water, excessive water. Um, and the good thing, too, about the job that I work, I work at a small doctor's office. They do have free bottled water, so I usually have about four. Um, and sometimes I work a six- or eight-hour shift. And if I work an eight-hour shift, I'll have five bottles of water. If I work a six-hour shift, it's usually about four. Um, we just talked about this, but I'll go back on it again. Eating out. Um, now, that could be hard for some people. And I try to tell people I'm not on a diet. I'm on a lifestyle change. And because when you say diet, diet is a temporary fix. So if you're on a diet, you might have a goal to lose, let's say, in six months, you want to lose 100 pounds. Because of that diet, you will lose 100 pounds. Um, diet are only temporary fix. So basically, if for six months you gave up, let's say you decided not to eat any meat at all, you decided to go vegan. Um, now some people keep it for a lifetime, you know, good for them. But there are people out there who have a hard time um, eliminating certain foods because they're trying to reach to a high potential goal of, of weight loss. And when you on a diet, you have to give up a lot of food uh, in order to lose the weight. That's the only no, I was able to lose the weight because I gave up red meat. I, I gave up coffee. I mean, it's not a lot of weight because I was 265. Um, now I'm down to 228 pounds. I still have a long way to go. I believe I will be happy at 180 pounds because that's the weight I can manage. But now, in order for me to lose additional 30 or 50 pounds, I need to step it up by going to the gym three days a week. Um, maybe um, eating, putting, putting more vegan diet into my food. Maybe some doing vegan once a week. Maybe now I'm going to have to do it twice a week in order to get that goal. So diets are temporary fix. Do they work? For some people, they work. They never worked for me. The only thing that worked for me was lifestyle change. Lifestyle change is basically something that I am going to do for the rest of my life. Something I can maintain. Now, I did a lifestyle change in the morning. Um, and I think this is everybody's breakfast. Bacon, eggs, toast, iced coffee or coffee or chocolate milk, a pancake or um, a chocolate chip muffin. Now, I said, because this has helped me because I have really bad sinus too. This had helped me with my sinus. It has helped me a lot. I said I am going to have a green smoothie. I do have a video too on my daily green smoothie, but I have changed it, so I will do another one in a couple of days, and I'll put that up. I have that every morning. That is something I could do, and I've been doing it for the last two weeks, no problem. I don't have any cravings for bacon or for eggs or toast. I have that, and I'm fine. 
lifestyle change is basically you taking an oath, something that you could do forever. It's not something that you're just going to do for four months to lose a couple of pounds and then go back to the way you weren't getting all the pounds. No. Lifestyle change is something that you could keep and maintain. So that's, that's what I thought. Now, throughout the years, people have asked me, like, is it depressing the fact that it's hard for me to have a child? Yes, it is depressing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that I don't cry at night time, uh, that I didn't get angry. But what I did, guys, and I'm not trying to preach religion on you, um, I pray God every night. And um, I have, you know, learned to forgive people. Um, and I'm more nicer to people. I was always a nice person. But I have a different type of therapy now where I get up in the morning, I, I read Psalm 23, and um, I've forgiven everyone that has hurt me in my past. Um, and I don't get angry if a friend or a relative is having a baby. I'm happy for them in the past. I would be happy for them that I would go home and cry my face out and I would be so jealous and envious that they were able to have a kid with no problem and I was able to have a kid. Now, I'm sharing this with you because I feel like there are a lot of people out there who has this condition um, and they just don't know where to go. I mean, you might be someone who probably, I don't know who you are as watch this video, but you could be someone who is maybe in the high 300s or high, like, like me, maybe you weigh 228 pounds, maybe you're 265 and you went in for IVF treatment and they told you they can't help you because of your weight. It's hard. It's depressing because thank goodness I don't have a thyroid problem, but there are people who have thyroid problems. And that can make it very hard. If you have a thyroid problem and you have PCOS, it's very hard to lose the weight with those two conditions combined. Um, a lot of times the doctors would suggest weight loss surgery. Now, I don't like to do any type of surgery unless it's something that's necessary. You know, I feel like I could lose the weight. Now, it's hard. And I was there too, guys. I, I mean, I started IVF and I will do a story because it's, it's a long story. But I was there too where they didn't want to help me because of my weight. They told me, come back when I'm 50 pounds lighter. It's not fair. Um, all those things really got me into like a dark spiral. It's not till I started going to church more frequently, reading my Bible, having faith in God, listening to some religious music. Um, that really uplifts my spirit, I was able to cope with PCOS, which will bring us here. Support group. What are you doing for your support group? Well, what I do is prayer. Um, I don't do meditation. I feel like if I'm praying to God, I feel like it's a sort of me meditating to him. So that's the kind of meditation I do. Um, naps are good. Now, I don't like to take naps throughout the day because if I take a nap in the day, it's going to be very hard for me to go to bed at nighttime. Um, art, maybe you could paint, maybe you could do art night with your girlfriend or family relatives. Those are really good ways to deal and cope with infertility. Movies, um, movies bring out joy, laughter. It brings out a lot of emotions in people. So that's a good way to cope with PCOS. I don't know about you. But sometimes I'll just drive to the mall if I feel like it's too much, like I can't handle it. I go to the mall, I observe other people who are shopping, I go around the stores, I don't have to have a lot of cash, I just window shop and I feel good. I usually come out with two or three bags, but I always do that. Mm -hmm. um, going out with your friends, I try at least once a week, maybe pick up a phone, call a girlfriend, Maybe meet a friend somewhere for dinner or for movies or, or shopping. Once a week, I try to do that, and that does help you with the stress. Drawer-wise, you don't have to have a destination. Take your car, drive to the next town, drive an hour away, two hours away. Who knows? Just keep driving. You don't need to have a destination to go somewhere. Drawer-wise, you listen to your music in your car, you know, you relax, you feel good. Um, so those are the things, those are the type of support groups I got. Now, I was never, I mean, there are a lot of support groups online, but I wanted to create this YouTube. Um, and as you guys can see, if you're watching my YouTube channel, I did start off as an Amazon and eBay seller. Um, I did that for over, before I went on YouTube, I did that for over like three years. Um, I took a step back from that because my health was declining. 
Um, and I will go into a little bit more story. I mean, I had high blood pressure uh, and the PCOS and depression really got to me. So um, I kind of had like a, not a nervous breakdown, but kind of like a, a mental body breakdown. So my body broke down. So uh, with Amazon and eBay, I felt like I wasn't really enjoying life anymore. Um, my life only became of going to the Goodwills early Saturday morning, going to Salvation Army store all day, coming home upstairs in my office for six to nine hours, just like taking pictures of items and back and forth with customers buying things. I mean, I didn't make a lot of money, but I felt like my husband's here and I have friends. Why am I locking myself in an office for six to nine hours a day? I mean, there will be some Saturdays when it was beautiful outside and all I wanted to do was go into a store for three or four hours, just dig to trash, come home when it's like 80, 90 degrees outside, go upstairs. I'm like, I, I stopped it. I just, I, gave, I mean, I didn't give up. I just feel like it's not for me. Um, I do have a lot of inventory. I want to do a huge yard sale throughout the summer and get rid of everything. And I really want to focus on my health and I want to focus on this channel. So that's why I'm doing, um, PS fight with PCOS, I change it. So if you were a subscriber and you love my eBay stuff and my Amazon stuff, I do apologize. Maybe once in a blue moon, I might throw a few things there for eBay, but I probably might put them more. If you follow me on Instagram, I might put them on Instagram, but I'm not really going to be talking about Amazon, eBay. I do apologize, but I still have shopping hauls. If you like seeing those Dollar Tree hauls, I do have one coming up in March. So I just wanted to give out a quick little thing for someone who was a, an old member. Um, let's see. Medical help. Do not think about, do not think about your condition that, you know, it's the end. Because a lot of times when you think about PCOS, it's like, oh, it's over for me or it's never going to happen. Don't think about that. Because the more you think about it, the worse it becomes. And that's what happened to me. I kept thinking about it and it just got really, really bad. Um, the more I thought about it, the more angry I became, the more depressed I became. Um, so another thing too with PCOS is doing yearly checkups. Now, a lot of insurance for OBGYN would tell people to get a checkup every two to three years. For myself, because I have PCOS, I want to see my OBGYN every year. Um, I don't want to wait every two to three years to see her. I want to do one every year just in case, you know, so that's that's what I do. Um, now, people have asked me throughout the years, does PCOS hurt? Um, and I said, no, PCOS is painless. Um, it could go many years undetected. Um, and the only reason why a provider or OBGYN doctor might know that you have PCOS is if you have no periods, um, excessive hair growth. And what I mean by it's my mom calling me, she always checks on me throughout the day, which is really nice of her. Um, like I said before, PCOS is very painless. It could go many years without being detected. Um, so you need to ask your doctor if you think you have PCOS. Um, and usually those little, before they do like an ultrasound to check your ovaries and stuff, they will ask you the big threes. Um, one, is do you have your monthly period, um, excessive hair growth, you know, patchy skin. And excessive hair growth is not like you're going to get like a lot of hair on your face. It's basically like, like if you shave, like if you pulled your hair out, like, you know, you went to the salon or you do it yourself, um, and it grows back a week later more than what it was before, that's excessive hair growth. Um, and the other one that's really big is if you're trying to have a baby um, and, you know, you don't have, you know, ovulate, they would be like, oh, you have PCOS. Now, if you're someone who's underage, who's not trying to have, like, let's say if you're 18 or not trying to have a baby, um, weight gain, excessive hair growth, um, no monthly cycle. And then before, when you tell them you have those conditions, they will do an ultrasound and only then they could really check your ovaries, and then if they see a lot of cysts in them that are with fluid sacs, then you have PCOS. 
Um, PCOS is not a deadly, it's not going to kill you. Um, but if it does go untreated, it could lead to other diseases and stuff in your body. Um, so what I'm trying to say is make sure when you go to your OBGYN doctor, your primary care doctor, tell them what you feel. Um, a lot of times people just say, oh, you know, I felt they, you know, they didn't get a period this week. And then they always think that you're pregnant. Um, but if you're someone who has tried to have a child, it's really difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, all I could say is, you know, get support how you can. Um, you're going to need a really good support system. You're going to need someone there that when you're feeling blue, you could go and talk to, or if it's videos, or if it's prayer, or if it's going to church, or if it's out with your friends, find something that's going to keep you metal, um, that's going to keep you sane, because a lot of people, they'll say this, just relax, it will happen when it happens, but the thing they don't understand, you can't just tell someone to relax, that it'll happen because this person knows they have PCOS. They've been told that it's going to be hard for them to have a child. Um, but my doctor had told me if I really want this baby, I will do whatever it takes to get this baby. And if that means dropping 50 pounds, now I will do it. Now, it's hard for a lot of people. It was hard for me. Um, but sometimes you just have to do whatever you need to do to get you to the next level. Now, if you're someone who does not want any kids, and not everybody wants kids, right? You just want to get your cycle, whatever. There are things you could do, too, to get your cycle. Um, and um, that's pretty much my video, guys. Now, I want this to be a support group. Please, if you want to leave some questions for me in the bottom, do. Um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know what you think about this video. Like I said, this video was how I was diagnosed with PCOS and questions and answers. Um, healthcare provider has provided me with throughout the years and family members have asked me. And these were some of the things that I had typed up because I figure sometimes, a lot of times people will do a video how they're diagnosed with PCOS, but I want to explain it. I want to ask, you know, put some questions and things that you might have in the back of your head that um, maybe you probably didn't get from other videos. So that is it, guys. My other video will definitely be um, a food haul pretty soon. I do have a March video coming up for Dollar Tree haul. You guys know how much I do the Dollar Tree hauls. Um, spring shopping. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of things coming up, um, how I deal with anxiety. So I, I have a bunch of things coming up. I do apologize if this video went up late. Um, Monday was present day. I just wanted a relaxed day. I didn't really want to shoot anything. So that is pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Um, I hope you checked out my weight loss video. And I really hope you learned something from this video. Uh, like I said, I have no medical background. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. This is strictly my own symptoms. These are questions that providers and family members have provided me with throughout the year or have asked me. So that's why I had went ahead and typed them up, guys. So bye-bye. Um, stay positive. Um, do not give up no matter what the doctor tells you. Um, always keep your faith. Bye-bye, guys.